Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 2 vs 2 on Column Bell and in this one I'm going to be using the 17th SS Panzer Division and I'm going to be playing with Haymaker who is using the 12th SS Panzer. So I'm using the yeah the Panzer Grenadier and the opponents are WZ Snipes who is going to be using the 2nd Infantry and uh, Skavenik is going to be using the 15th infantry so let's just put this to my perspective and uh, I will talk through our strategy so it's pretty much a simple one I'm gonna have uh, Haymaker taking control of the factory and then I was gonna be uh, holding on the left side and I was gonna be playing this uh, pretty defensively uh, the idea was for me to get a foothold into this town and uh, then basically hold my ground because honestly it's not really much point pushing through the town when you don't need to um, because it's just almost a waste of points but I do try and make some ground eventually but it's just very very hard work. I have a, a small strategy that I like to use with the SS Panzer Grenadier division and it's basically double MG start especially in like towns. MGs are fantastic if you use them alongside command infantry so that's what I'm going to be trying to do in this game and you can see them coming in in these Schwimmwagens the command infantry there. I've got a couple of these uh, Panzer Grenadier squads as well in Schwimmwagens and then I've also got the Stug 3. Now this Stug 3 the idea was to have this sort of sit down here so it can fire down the street and uh, the, I think you can put it into cover like just in this bush and in this bush here and if you put it in this one, obviously, it can still fire down the street and remain in cover, which is really, really nice. And definitely a position for like an AT gun and so on. If you were to ever to play this map, it's a really nice position uh, to use on your side of the town. You've got to remember that this town is actually relatively fair in that because you have the turn in the road, it does actually allow the uh, allies, in this case, to get quite far down uh, before you come under contact. So there you go. Either way, in the middle, got a couple of AT guns as usual. Uh, this AT gun's going to be covered by some Stostrup, and uh, this one's going to be covered by a recon unit, just so that I have that recon there to spot enemy vehicles to be taken out by the AT gun. Over on the right side, Haymaker's going to be using the combination of the Cromwell and the Firefly to push up the center of the map. And over on the right, he has his Opel Blitzes with his infantry as not alongside the command infantry and an AT gun there. So let's just speed things up and get things underway. The Haymaker invested a lot of points into the Firefly and Cromwell combo. He's definitely got a skeleton force for the factory at the moment, moving one AT gun over to the right just to cover that off. Pretty risky start honestly, you do risk getting overrun. Since we are playing against the 2nd Infantry and the 15th Infantry, uh, that's not too much of an issue because there isn't really any half tracks that can really force the issue. Enemy uh, recon plane does come over from the start, not something that I generally see quite often. My AT gun is getting into position on the right side however, and all of my machine guns are in position now along with my Panzer Grenadiers and the Soft Troops. So I've got the Soft Troop close on the left, just in case anything decides to come through these trees, they will get cut down very quickly by the Soft Troop. Trying to uh, move up the MG42 slightly, and I've got some Soft Troop uh, further on as well. Got this Stug 3 into position now to fire down the street. Uh, so that's waiting to come under enemy contact. And at the moment, everything is deadly silent. Now over here you can see that I do have a 223. Now this is actually just a uh, armoured car with a machine gun on it. But the idea was that just it provides the extra veterancy for the pack 38 for if they were to push down the centre. Now at this point, since we haven't made um, an amazing amount of ground on the right side and in the centre, the enemy are actually uh, running 53% over us, so they are running a plus one uh, lead at the moment and the allies are taking the, the uh, lead currently. However, I do want to uh, maybe stop that from happening so I'm going to bring up a mortar. That's going to allow me to start provide some pressure on this left side. You can see that uh, they do have this M7 double D here and that's uh, going to be a bit of an issue 
for me pushing forwards because it can definitely attack my infantry and destroy them very quickly. It has an amazing HE power of 15 and um, uses that 1200 meter range quite effectively if it can get line of sight onto my infantry. Now I thought I'd rather not leave the Stug in the open here so I move that into cover. And at the moment all things very quiet. Not too much going on. I think at this point I was just watching Haymaker try and make some ground in the centre here using his Firefly and Cromwell. He's brought up a 222 and the uh, recon. He was a bit wary about moving forwards without recon. He's uh, quite smart, I guess. <laughs> so he has brought up the recon and waited for that to arrive before moving on with the Cromwell and Firefly. I'm bringing up uh, a unit in the centre. Just cover off the push of the front line. And now I can see mortar tra uh, like a mortar coming up alongside this T30 HMC. Again, this is another unit that has uh, quite high HE, 9 HE power. Can uh, target you from quite long range if you let it. It does have the 1000 meter range. Definitely does a lot of inf uh, damage to both uh, AT guns and infantry if you let it. So just continuing to bring up some more reinforcements. The reinforcements coming up now, they're basically here to actually push. Because I was thinking, like at this point, we're running 54% territory in the enemy's favour. And that's not ideal, really, <laughs> at this point in the game. We need to make a push somewhere. So Haymaker's still trying to make some ground in the middle. He's got his uh, Panzer Grenadiers into position in the town, in the uh, like factory here. He's finally moving up them a little bit further as well. Going to be taking out some infantry here very nicely with the help of the Cromwell and the 222 and so on. Now he's pushing on some rifle squads. So the engagement has begun on the right side. Over on the left side, the same starting to happen. Back 38 being targeted by a couple of mortars. Really quite annoying. But my MG42s have opened up onto the rifle squads now. And I'm also moving up the uh, Stug through the uh, trees here to uh, try and take out some of these rifles as well. Also maybe target the uh, T-30 HMC to get rid of that. I do actually hit it. But for some reason don't kill it. It's only got three armour. Second shot does the job, which was rather nice. And now the mortars are going to be coming in onto my MG-42s. And I'm going to be trying to counter battery through their artilleries, but they've got another two on the left side now. So I've got my two mortars trying to uh, counter battery their mortars. Unfortunately, my mortars aren't extremely accurate, so <laughs> they weren't really firing exactly where I wanted them to. But now, with the cover of the MG42s, what I'm planning to do is actually uh, move forward the SOS troop. Try not to let them get caught out in the open, though. This uh, mortar, as soon as it's pinned down, is going to be forced to fall back. And uh, my Stug 3 is now opening up onto the rifles. I'm making a little bit of ground, and the Stoss Troop uh, I managed to get very close to these rifles, which is great because at that close range, the uh, submachine guns do do a lot of damage. But now the M7DD is on target as well. And well, with that shot coming in, look at this boom. Doing a lot of morale damage. The Ranger Marauders also uh, providing a lot of enemy fire there. So I'm just going to quickly throw a smoke grenade and try and get into that building but the, the same 7 double d coming in with a really nice shot pinning down the stoss troop and killing off my other squad kind of annoying and my stug 3 does take out the 57 millimeter at gun but these enemy mortars at the moment are really being a pain in the bum was mean to have to run around all over the place with my mortars So it's quite annoying because if this uh, sauce troop hadn't been hit by the M7 uh, double D, I probably would have taken control of the top side of the town. And now I'm just going to have to move up these uh, sauce troop and to us uh, to assist. And meanwhile, on the right side, well, uh, Haymaker is making a lot of ground with the Firefly and the Cromwell here, and eventually pushing up with some of these Panzer Grenadiers. So it looks like this combination for him is paying off at the moment. 
although he did lose his, although his uh, recon squad is still assisting him. We've got the Panzer Grenadiers pushing up in the centre as well. They're making some ground for us, although we're only back to 50-50 at the moment. Stoss Troop are engaging these uh, Ranger Marauders. And they do actually kill off the Ranger Marauders, and my Stoss Troop are still alive. They're now engaging the Ranger Leader, and we actually take out the Ranger Leader as well. And then the rifles finish them off. So the Stoss Troop are doing a fantastic job there. And now I'm finally making some ground into the top side of this town. So just sort of using my mortars alongside these machine guns, alongside the Stug, trying to make as much ground as I can. Also bringing up some new reinforcements. And I think at this point, because like the enemy had brought in so many mortars, and they aren't very effective against like these Panzer Grenadiers and MG42s in cover. Especially with like the quite low HE, because they're actually using these Ranger mor uh, mortars with the 6 HE. So I'm able to get away with pushing quite hard, even though they do have these mortars. And, well, I managed to even get to the edge of the town and push them all the way back. I make those rifles surrender in that building. And now I'm able to pin down some of the rifles further back, although with this m 7 d coming onto target, I don't really want to be sitting on the edge of the town for too long. So I am going to be uh, bringing those back. However, they are going to get hit directly by some mortar fire, unfortunately, and then forced to fall back. Now an AT gun is going to be engaging my Stug 3. I was kind of trying to just reverse away from that. Probably should have just let my Stug fire at the 57mm AT gun. But uh, just letting it get hit in the front armor so many times does eventually cause it to be falling back. My mortars are engaging their mortars just about managed to get it out of there for now. So I've got loads of infantry here and it's basically... I'm basically in the defensive now. I've managed to push them out of the town thanks to my own fire support and machine guns. Uh, the Stoss Troop made a lot of ground for me, killing off a lot of the important units. And uh, that's basically giving me the presence on the left side. And we're now currently running a plus one thanks to uh, Haymaker's progress in the center. So he's taking out units all over the place here. He's got his Panzer Grenadiers and Panzer Grenfuhrer pushing forwards in the middle. Uh, Stug still being attacked by this AT gun. I'm going to try and mortar that. And now I'm going to bring up uh, some more uh, artillery. This time we're going to be bringing in the Nurblewerfer 41s. My pack 38 was unfortunately found and destroyed. It did only have one health left, but eventually it got spotted and taken out, which was kind of annoying. Also got another AT gun coming up to replace that one after it died. And now Haymaker's pushing up this road quite heavily. Just using the Cromwell with the Firefly to pin down these rifles. It's also bringing up some reinforcements now. Panzer II alongside two 222s. And uh, there's some 259s making some ground on the right side alongside the uh, Pack 38. And just to keep the Pack 38 alive there, which is pretty important. Enemy tank is going to go down here. That's the uh, Churchill dealt with. And uh, over on this left side, well, <laughs> these Panzer Grenadiers are going to get taken out. My opponent's trying to use uh, fire position to uh, hit this building. And it was a, a quite a good move um, using the uh, fire position on the M7 there. Definitely allows them to do a lot of damage. Um, these Panzer Grenadiers get caught out in the open by all of those machine guns. Uh, so they're going to be forced to fall back. And I'm moving over the Stug to the right side now. I'm just trying to get line of sight onto the M7 D and the uh, M4A1 D. This pack 43 is going to be turning to engage the 57mm AT gun on the right side. And now my Stug is going to be starting to be engaged by the 57mm AT gun of the enemy. So just going to 
Maybe I should go over to the left now. Pretty risky keeping it in that cover there. So just gonna move it back behind at these buildings and hopefully get line of sight down the road onto either the M7 or the M4A1. And I'm currently moving over pack 43 to the right side uh, just so that it can get line of sight if I can. Also gonna bring up a couple of these uh, 222s uh, with the recon squad so that I can see anything that's in this tree line. And obviously you can see that my Nebelwerfer 42s are in position. So these are the ones with the 30 HE. They have a very large splash damage of 120 meters. And basically as soon as I see the uh, mortars open up again, you can see there is obviously two mortars here. I'm going to be engaging them with the Nebelwerfers. The Nebelwerfers are firing away. And boom goes the Ranger Mortar. Gonna be pinning down another one. Take out another mortar. And well, that's two artillery pieces down, thanks to the Nerve Earthers. And after they've shot, I make sure to move them away from where they were, so the enemy uh, planes and uh, artillery can't fire back. Now this uh, P-38 Lightning, uh, keeps coming down to attack my pack 43. Quite an investment there by the opponents using that to attack the pack 43. I'm continuously trying to uh, pin down the infantry as it comes across the open. And over on this right side, well, <laughs> Amake has done a fantastic job as he actually makes his uh, opponent surrender. He surrounded all of the enemy rifles in the factory now and is going to be taking them out. Because basically what happened is uh, Haymaker used his mobile forces, the Panzer II alongside the uh, Cromwell and the Firefly on the left side, and these 222s push on the left, and then uh, over on the right side of the factory he used the 259s, and basically surrounded the factory as you can see. It's left a small pocket of rifles in the factory which can eventually be dealt with, but uh, it's currently providing us the plus one currently. Now my ME109 uh, does come in with uh, rockets and does get shot down by this P38, unfortunately. Currently got this uh, 232 and the 231 recon here. The idea of this combination was to maybe take out the AT gun and whatever else was in this tree line. I've got my 222s charging up on the left here. We're going to be charging up and taking out the M7DD with the auto cannon. My Stig 3 was actually taken out uh, by the enemy M4A1, I think. This P38 P38 is going to be trying to take out the Nebelwerfer where it last saw it, but I'm just continuously moving that around, and now I have two munition trucks coming up to uh, resupply these Nebelwerfers so I can use them again soon. But yeah, I'm still under constant pressure. Uh, it looks like... Uh, trying to get these rifles up. He probably should have been using these mortars to smoke his rifles so he could actually continue to move them forwards as opposed to uh, using them to try and actually mortar my position. P38 coming in for another strafing run, run there. It's an M4A1 now pinning down my Panzer Grenadiers. These Panzer Grenadiers not having AT weapons is actually really annoying sometimes because in this situation like that M4A1 would probably be dead but I'm not using SS Panzer, so it's not the case. I managed to sneak the 222 to the left to uh, kill off an APC there. One of the half tracks. Now you can see this uh, 57mm AC gun is opening up onto my 231s. Now the only trouble with this engagement is that the 232 and the 231 only have 800m range on their auto cannons, so they actually managed to take out my recon uh, vehicle there before. I am able to get on target. As soon as 232 with two stars gets on target, it's going to do a lot of damage very quickly. And affecting the morale of that AT gun does it enough so that the AT gun actually misses. So that AT gun wasn't better at all. Now, Haymaker does bring in a Storch. That Storch is going to get uh, attacked by the P 38 Lightnings. We are going to see my MG get destroyed here, but my 232, well, that's still pushing up. The M7 Double D is 
basically attacking that using the HE shell. It's kind of annoying. The only reason he has a second M7DD I think at this point is because he's a teammate left so he was able to bring in another one. By the way, this 222, that's going to try and take a pot shot at the mortars. These rifles are pushing into the town now, but getting pinned down in the open. I'm going to move my 222s into position to take care of those rifles. The rifles actually lose morale, though, and end up surrendering. So I managed to get rid of two squads. I've also got loads of reinforcing infantry coming up now, uh, just to continue to hold the town. So currently, my, my opponent is just forcing himself into the town when honestly you should probably be dealing with a haymaker on the right side i know he's one person versus two people now but in general uh, you don't want to let this happen because all, all that will end up happening is when haymaker decides to sweep left and cover me uh, he'll just get side shot like all over the place as i'm continuing to push he didn't manage to take out the pocket in the factory and he's got all of these uh, units here pushing forwards. His half track's just sort of probing at the moment. One of the 222s was destroyed in the town, unfortunately. My number of earthers are opening up again. So, just again to take out more mortars, all of the enemy fire support, some of the infantry, and so on. So, yeah, going to be pin pinning down these rifles, doing a lot of morale damage to the M7DD, took out the mortars. Not doing particularly a huge amount of damage, but definitely disrupting their attack quite effectively. So he's moving over the M7DD to engage my 222, and then he's moving forwards the M4A1 to take a shot as well. But I'm just going to try and keep this in cover the best I can. Unfortunately, it is going to be forced to fall back. And also my Panzer Grenadiers here aren't pinned down very close to the M4A1. So this 222, well, with it falling back so close to the M4A1, is basically going to get uh, continuously attacked until it dies. So goodbye to the 222. Now I have another, well, my 232 coming up. It's going to be engaging the M7DD. And, well, since they're able to get so close with all these M4A1s, I'm deciding to bring up three squads of Panzerstrex. The only thing I can think of right now that could really make a difference, I could bring in AT guns, but they won't be covered like they would be in the towns with Panzerstrex. Like, the Panzerstrex will be in hardcover in the town. If I bring in an AT gun, they're just going to get hit by airstrikes. And, um... And also just sort of mortared and so on. Whereas if I bring in Panzer Strikes, I can run them around all over the place and they're a little bit more versatile. So as you can see, dropping off a couple of them. Dropping off the third one, unfortunately. <laughs> the shot from the M7 onto the 232 does actually destroy my Panzer Strike squad as it lands right next to them. My uh, command infantry squad gets taken out there by an artillery shot from these uh, long range Hoitzers. So that was unfortunate as well. But just getting this Panzer Strike into. Uh, line of sight of the M7 Double D. The M7 is trying to turn to kill the Panzer Shrek. Panzer Shrek's going to get a second shot off in time to destroy that. Now I'm going to be moving the Panzer Shrek over to the left side to take care of the M4A1. Now as you can see back here I have got a third Nurburgwerfer 42 and I'm also bringing in these three SK-18s. Now these are extremely long range artillery, they have 4,000 meter range. So I'm adjusting those to counter battery the enemy howitzers. And just listen to them as they fire, they sound absolutely awesome. There you go. I did fire off a, a noble never never worth a strike here just to prevent their rifles from uh, pushing into the town I am gonna burn one to death see they are firing very very far they have a massive range of 4,000 meters so this is their range circle here absolutely crazy 
Just using them to take care of the enemy artillery, stop that firing into the town. We have a couple of Panzerstreck squads left. I have the uh, Pack 40 here that has been attacked quite a lot already. That's just covering the road. Um, Panzerstreck squads and the Panzer Grenadiers still trying to make their way up the centre of the town. Meanwhile, though, Haymakers uh, sweeping across now, like I said before, with this uh, centre and right side being neglected. Uh, Haymaker is able to just sweep across, and we are currently running the plus three. Unfortunately, this P47 Thunderbolt does actually take out my 232. Got my uh, Panzer Trek here on uh, return fire because I don't want that uh, to be spotted and killed. Fortunately, the Panzer Trek or the Panzer Grenadier squad actually loses its house. The house gets destroyed. So that was a bit unfortunate. And I do have two Noble Werfers, so I just uh, bring them both in to uh, Scorched Earth as the uh, enemy move forwards. You can see all of these houses now burning. Absolutely crazy. The town's just completely on fire. Well, the Noble Werfers are really doing a great job there. These Noble Werfer 42s, the more powerful variants. Now I'm trying to get my artillery back on target of the enemy howitzers. They're going to be firing away again. And at the moment, just constant air attack on both myself and Haymaker. Didn't really have any serious amount of fighters to deal with uh, the enemy's aircraft. So basically, I was just ignoring it hoping it wasn't going to do too much damage and then just using my artillery to uh, counter battery their artillery and uh, just Please stopping them in general from trying to make any ground into this town whilst Haymaker continues his way around the right side. Now the reason Haymaker could continue his way around the right side is because uh, the player on my side, uh, Snipes, was just putting so much effort into taking this when honestly if he'd uh, tried to just uh, push it across the open a little bit more, I reckon he would have had a much better time, especially considering I neglected bringing in any AT guns to the right side, uh, just because they were getting mortared so much. So he could have used that advantage of me not having those AT guns in position to just push through. And yeah, I would have had the AT guns further back eventually, but he would have already made that ground and then would have maybe been able to uh, surround the town rather than just trying to push straight through it. And now I just have... Uh, such a good position. I've got these Noble Werfers here to uh, help defend and I've also got the SK-18s to help destroy the uh, howitzers and as you can see I do actually manage to destroy one directly. Recon squad does unfortunately go down. These Panzer Grenadiers are going to get hit hard now that the uh, Ranger Marauders have spotted them. But again, this uh, continuously throughout this game like Haymakers just pushing all the way across I'm bringing in loads of loads and loads of AA at the moment just to stop these uh, air attacks because I just feel basically safe in the town at the moment. You can use these tanks as much as he wants. The A is going to be pinning down my Panzer Grenadiers, but at the end of the day, not really going to be making too much ground. As soon as my Nova Werfers reload, I can just use them again and uh, force them back. I'm even hitting his Rhino with my artillery here. Forcing that to fall back. Just kind of making it a little bit of ground, but not too much. Nothing he can really occupy. All of these houses have been destroyed. And now we're running a plus four lead with 75% territory because uh, Haymaker's done such a great job on the right side. And after, well, 26 minutes and 24 seconds, we reach the 2000 point limit and win the game. So this was a very interesting game because it's not often that I end up using artillery um, but uh, when it comes down to like a bogged down town fight like that I guess there's not really much else you can invest in. I could have probably gone for the uh, flanking attack myself but I knew that Haymaker had the right under control so why bother trying to like make that attack myself when Haymaker's going to come across and I'm just being focused really hard. So I'm just going to defend myself in the town, let the enemy push on to me, that's absolutely fine, just cover it with artillery 
and uh, then my teammate can come in from the side and kill them off. So that really what happened in this game. Uh, if we go to the kills and losses, you can see that I actually lost quite a lot of units trying to defend that town. And uh, Snipes did actually do quite a good job with his kills and losses. But it's just his focus was so wrong. Um, pushing into that town, like tunnel visioning on the town against me, was exactly what I wanted him to do. Like, if he'd pushed me elsewhere, I might have had a much harder time because he definitely had, like, the artillery and the, the support capability to take out my AT guns. And without AT guns, the 17th SS Panzer can be very vulnerable to, like, spearhead attacks through, you know, lightly defended areas. So... That's something you got to watch out with the SS Panzer Grenadiers. Either way, um, it was a very interesting battle, and it was a shame that the opponent's teammate left, um, Skavenik, because, um, well, he was getting wrecked pretty hard by Haymaker. <laughs> if we go over to the kills and see that the Stug did a reasonable good job, the Nobelwerfer took out six, or um, three mortars, sorry. Nobelwerfer 42 took out another mortar there. Uh, this Nobelwerfer took out some rifles and some scouts. So the Nobelwerfers didn't actually get like many kills. They definitely like slowed down the attack into the town. Caused a lot of morale damage. And they also um, did damage the squads quite significantly. So that they could be picked off by other units. Uh, the SK-18s again they didn't do too much. Cost me a lot to bring in. But didn't actually kill too much. Again just causing morale damage. Just forcing them away from the town. Uh, the TTTs picked up some a few kills here and there, and the Stoss Troop uh, allowing me to take control of the town it was really, really nice. The Stoss Troop did an amazing job throughout their game. So that was uh, hopefully an interesting one for you, a bit closer than normal. I mean, it wasn't close in terms of the overarching map, like Haymaker rolled over his opponent on his side. However, I felt that like the town engagement was like a really interesting one to watch. And just shows you like how you can overinvest so much into a single location that you end up neglecting the rest of the map and letting it uh, take you over. Um, so yeah, that's it anyway. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.